Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all well. Welcome to the first video of the new year actually, and the first video of a new decade as well, because of course it's 2020 now. So I wanted to discuss something today that is actually one of my most popular requests to do a video on, and that is the Gran Turismo 3 press kits. Now, it's this one in particular that people are interested in because it's so rare in fact that it's the only one that I've ever seen. And it's the Gran Turismo 3 Le Mans 2001 press kit. The other one, of course, is the more standard press materials and it's, it's more common. I don't really want to say common because it's still quite rare, but it's definitely more common than the other one. So today, we're going to take a look at both these press discs and basically see what's on them and have a look at a few differences between them as well. Okay, so we're going to start off by taking a look at their appearance first of all, before we dive on to what's actually on the discs themselves. So starting with the, the more standard press materials kit, um, as you can see it looks quite like the PAL version of Gran Turismo 3, except you've got the big press materials writing up at the top there. The back as well looks pretty similar to the PAL version too. No kind of major differences that I can point out. Now, alternatively, the, uh, the Le Mans press materials looks completely different on the front. It has a, what seems to be a picture of the race course, except it's actually quite pixelated. I don't know if you can see it that well from there, but it's not the best image to be honest. And also the font of the, uh, the Gran Turismo logo and the press materials wording is, is completely different, it seems, to the, the normal Gran Turismo font. Now if you look on the back, it's pretty much the same as the standard press materials kit, um, except for one little shelf towards the bottom there. Um, looking at the spine, it's pretty much what you would expect really, uh, and also has more writing on because of course the, uh, the title is a bit bigger. I do wonder whether they, they chose to just put GT3 rather than Gran Turismo 3, uh, because it would just be too long to fit all that wording on there. Okay, so we're going to have a look inside them now to see what contents lie within. So we're going to start with the standard press materials one again. The first thing to note is the booklet, which is a Gran Turismo 3 car guide. And it actually has this lovely blue cover, which is really nice uh, against the red of the front cover. Now inside it, you've just got pages and pages. I think it's about 84 pages long, actually about some of the cars in the game. I don't want to say all of them because I haven't checked through it in that much detail, but I doubt you could get every single car in the game onto 84 pages. So, what else is there inside? So what we have is a Gran Turismo 3 press information disc, which looks like that, from July 2001. It's nicely dated there. And we also have a copy of the game as well. A PAL copy too, the European version, basically. So, if we look at the Le Mans press kit, what we have is no car booklet whatsoever. Two discs again, but the first one is a DVD video dated to the 16th and 17th of June 2001. And also the press information disc. Now, I've had a quick look already. The press information disc here and in the other press kit are quite similar. Not completely similar though, so we will go through a few of the differences after. And also the DVD video, which you'll notice was completely absent from the normal press kit. Just before we dive into the discs, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all my members. Your support is really appreciated, and essentially just helps me to carry on doing videos like this. So thank you very much. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the files on the discs now. So I've already copied them across to my computer here so you can see two files, one for the Le Mans press kit and one for the standard press materials as well. So we're going to dive into the Le Mans one and we're going to go for the press information disc first. Now if you remember me saying that um, a lot of the files across the two press discs, across the two press kits, are actually quite similar with only a couple of little differences. So we don't need to go through both of them in detail, but after I will dive into the, uh, the other press disc and I'll just show you what those different files are. So we're going to jump straight in, go to corporate, or at least I assume it's corporate, they don't actually have full words here. 
Um, and we're going to jump into PlayStation and PS2 hardware. So the first thing we've got here is three shots of the PlayStation 2. Now, as you might remember, the PlayStation 2 was a pretty new console, Gran Turismo 3. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Gran Turismo 3 might have actually been something of a launch title for the PS2. Um, so obviously there was a lot of marketing around the PlayStation 2 at that time, because if you didn't have a PlayStation 2, well, you couldn't play Gran Turismo 3. Um, there's also a word doc around PlayStation history as well, it's called PS Hist A. Presumably there's a PS History B, but for whatever reason we only have the A here. So we're going to jump back. There is a folder that says PR contact, or PR contact, anyway. Um, I'm not going to open this file just because it contains like contact details of the, the PR contacts for Gran Turismo at the time, um, so I wouldn't want to share anyone's personal information. So anyway, now that we've got over the, the kind of corporate stuff, um, we can now dive into the, the Gran Turismo folder, which I think is probably going to be more interesting anyway. Oh, as you can see we've got four folders here, the first one is for the original Gran Turismo so we're going to dive into the artwork folder straight away. As you can see we've got a nice kind of high res model of the Corvette 96, the Viper RT10 and some really nice again high res shots, they, to most, they remind me of the, the opening cinematic to the original Gran Turismo. One of the TVR Griffith there, um, another one there that was used for some of the backgrounds in Gran Turismo and also one of my absolute favourite shots from the original Gran Turismo. This shot, or at least one very much like it, from a slightly different angle, was used for the original menu screen on Gran Turismo. And what's interesting is that it, it shows all these cars in quite a beta state um, from months before the final game was released. So they all, to be honest, differ to their final version counterparts. I've actually done a, a whole video on this topic actually, so comparing the cars here to the cars in the final game. So you should check it out if you're interested in learning a bit more about these cars. And of course another shot of the same image as well. Anyway, and we have another lovely shot of the Nismo R33 GTR. And some other cars as well of course. Cool, so going to move on to the logo. I think we all know what the Gran Turismo logo looks like. but just in case you needed it, that's quite a big version actually, but just a shame it doesn't have a transparent background, otherwise like, it could have actually been quite handy for my videos. And of course you've got the pack shot as well. You know, we all know what Gran Turismo looks like, right? And a few screenshots as well. So we'll take a look at these. Um, not too high res to be fair, and they seem to show what seems to be a final version of the game. So there shouldn't be anything too groundbreaking here, but still. Nice nonetheless. So we've got the Viper, a few cars there at high speed ring, uh, including the FTO LM Edition, one of my absolute favourite cars. Nismo, oh, FTO again. So it seems to be kind of highlighting a lot of the special models. I imagine that, you know, those were the models they were somewhat proud of, <laughs> I imagine. So there we go, again, nothing too groundbreaking there. And we've got some text as well. So a, a press release around the original Gran Turismo. So here we go. 
when it originally launched. There we go, 22nd of October 1998. Of course, I don't believe we got it over here in the UK until 1999, just off the top of my head. As you can see, the unit shipped. Uh, Europe actually outsold North America. That's interesting, I really didn't know that. And obviously the totals. So obviously, again, you can pause this, read through this whole document if you like at your own pace. I'm just going to skip through it for now for the purpose of this video. GT2 now. So obviously, same kind of folder structure here. Um, not as many files, it seems. Lotus Elise 111S. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember it having the, the tail on it like that. That's quite interesting. Someone's going to have to correct me on that if possible. But I don't, yeah, I don't remember that rear spoiler being there. Maybe it was, who knows. And the Jaguar XJ220 race car. Again, those tyres look really fat to me. They seem to kind of stick out from the uh, from the car. Weird. Okay, me, again, maybe it's just me. And then we've got a shot of the uh, the Lancer Evolution rally car. Also, a really nice shot of some of the cars. Ah, what? I'll tell you what. What's interesting here is if you notice the. Uh, the Honda, oh sorry, Mugen NSX on the right hand side there. That white colour scheme was actually cut from the game, but it still exists um, in some of the demos. So you can actually play as it with cheat codes, of course, on that. So, alright, we jump back out of the artwork file, go to the logo. I'm sure, you know, everybody knows what the, uh, the Grand Transmit 2 logo looks like, so we don't need to go into that too, in too much detail. The pack shot, again, from the, the PAL version of the game. And now we have some screenshots, so some of these don't seem to be functional, but hopefully, there we go, we can view some. So that's quite interesting, so it's the Corvette Stingray 42767, I think. Um, and a beta version of Seattle, I think, <laughs> again. Now, I say a beta version of Seattle because the sky looks kind of somewhat darker uh, than it did in the final version of the game. And again, we have more muscle cars, of course. Yeah, so you can see, and um, it, it seems to be around the same time as the demos were released. Obviously, they, they were spread out over a period of time, but yeah, the Gran Turismo 2 logo in the bottom left-hand corner there uh, indicates that it was from a pre-release version of the game, because that's what all the demos had. Pensionismo, and... Oh, there we go, so one more is going to work. Suzuki, Suzuki Cappuccino. Often misspelt Cappuccino on Gran Turismo 2. Okay, so that's it for the screenshots. Let's carry on and have a look at the GT2 press release this time. So here we go. Start off at London, December 1999. And that was when, well, it says when they announced the anticipated release of Gran Turismo 2. I'm sure it was actually announced way before then. And again, you know, feel free. So pause the video at any point, just read through this in more detail, because obviously I, I can't go through every single detail of this in this video, it's just mainly a quick overview of what's in these press kits, because I know that people are really excited to see what's in them. Okay, so carrying on, we're now going to go for Gran Turismo 3, which is obviously the one that is most relevant to these press discs. So starting off with the artworks, artworks this time rather than artwork. A few car models, actually quite a few car models, more than I expected actually. So what is essentially a Porsche Boxster, uh, which is of course the Roof 3400S. Check your XKR, I presume? It is, yeah, rather than the XK8. Ford GT40, that looks like a really nice model. Oh, so there's no, ah, no front view of the GT40, that's a bit disappointing. The Opal Speedster, also called uh, Vauxhall VX220 in, in the UK, of course. And, oh god, what was that called? The Gilet Vertigo. There we go. It's been a while. It's been a while since I played Grand Turismo 3. And the Pagani Zonda, of course. Oh, nice side view there. Can't see whether it's the C12 or the C12S, but hey, never mind. The models are pretty similar anyway. Now I'll have a look in high res, so we've got a few screenshots of the game. Looks to be really nice ones. A few of these I've actually seen before. So there we go, we have the... oh, alright. So all my... <laughs> I see. So the background is a little bit more blurred on one of... 
That's interesting that they chose to put them both in. The Autobacks NSX, of course, so a race around what looks like midfield. And uh, what do we have? So we have Tokyo Route 246, is it? Um, they look to be going backwards around that though, rather than rather than forwards. Then you have what looks to be Special Stage Route 5 in the wet, of course. This was the first time that a wet race had ever featured on Gran Turismo. Seattle, lovely shot. Seen it a lot of times before actually, but the sky just looks really, really nice in that picture. Master RX-8 debuted in Gran Turismo Concept, I believe. And there it is at what looks to be midfield again. And then you have the Lancer Evolution 7. I can actually say Evo 7 this time without it being wrong. And we have, is that looks to be a duplicate, I guess. Another one, the RX-8, and there we go. We are at the end of the high-res folder. Continuing, we have the GT Force, which I believe yeah is the, the GT3 wheel that was released. I hope this image works. Oh, there we go. The Force feedback. And we have like a big kind of press release around that as well. From a product point of view, um, obviously they wanted to, to get people to buy the wheel as well to play Gran Turismo. Now of course it's commonplace to have professional players and also casual players as well play with the wheel rather than a controller. But I think back then it was it was a lot more rare. If I remember right there were wheels available for the PS1 but at least nobody I knew seemed to own one. So there we go carrying on. The logo of course Gran Turismo 3 we all know it. The pack shot of course is going to be the PAL version yeah, so pretty much the same as what we've seen on the press materials kit itself. And the screenshots, so we finally have some more screenshots. These are some of the most interesting assets on, on any disc, really. On any press disc, that is. So the R34 Skyline, making its return from Gran Turismo 2. The roof, which I always thought was RUF by the fact that it was capitalised. Uh, the Mines Lancer, Sprinter Trueno, of course. I never know whether it's Truno or Trueno. Not sure. 350Z, of course, made its debut in Gran Turismo Concept as well, if I remember right. Seattle Circuit 2. Not 100% sure what that L2 and R2 thing is in the top left hand corner. It's also something that, that I, I personally remember from Gran Turismo 3. Maybe it's something to do with the camera, I assume. The replay camera, that is. This on Sylvia. Nice. Around what looks to be. Um, what do, you, what do you call it? You know, it's one of the the tracks that's used for the license test, where it's just it's basically like a 360 circle. Um, so it's a Celica Rally car, very nice. The wheels kind of clipping into the bodywork there. Honda NSX, and there we go. That's it. That's it for the screenshots. Studio logo. Again, never know. I think it's. I believe it's pronounced polyphony, but when I was younger, I used to say polyphony because I, I didn't know any better, you know? So a lot of information, again a lot of word docs around Gran Turismo 3, so these are the key features. I expect this to be more of a, an overview, basically. Fantastic, again feel free to read this in your own time, I'll just scroll through it slowly. And there we go, so a pretty small one this time. Ah, oh, GT3 car list. Ooh, we'll go back to that in a second. There's, gonna, there's bound to be some interesting stuff in that. Gran Turismo 3, I expect a bit more information. This is the uh, the soundtrack, of course, this will be the PAL, the PAL soundtrack. And the GT3 press release. So, talks about E3 in 2001, about a month before uh, this press release was dated, I think. Um, obviously the, the other press materials, one states July, if I remember right, and the other one is June. So, here we go. Here is the track list. So, again, don't know whether there will be any surprises on here. I assume not, but you never know. Apricot Hill, Complex String, obviously Complex String made its debut in Gran Turismo 3, as did Cote d'Azur. Um, it did actually feature in a demo of Gran Turismo 2, but it was far from finished. A lot of tracks returning from Gran Turismo 2 and of course the original Gran Turismo as well. Now I've noticed there's three sheets here, so it's uh, so nothing on those two sadly. So there we go. 
so here we go, here's the car list. Um, again, I won't go through every single car in here, let's just, I'm going to have a peek at just how long it is, so about 143 rows, do we have anything? No, we have nothing in these sheets once again. Um, we'll go back to sheet 1 and we'll properly kind of have a look at this. It's not quite as big as I thought it would be. So a couple of Daihatsus, Hondas, Raybergen SX, Castrol Mugen. I'm just looking for anything anything that really stands out to me. First thing is the uh, the Diablo. Obviously no no maker there because it wasn't officially a Lamborghini car. It was the uh, the Nomad Diablo that actually made it into the Japanese version of Gran Turismo 3 and of course was also in the North American version but was only accessible with cheat codes. So what interests me is it just says Diablo GT car. I mean, I assume it's the same one, but um, the title isn't final. So there we go, Mazdas. Now on to Mitsubishi. So this is quite interesting. We have the Nissan Silvia, but then Varietta is, is in this cell as well, rather than being in this cell over here. Bit weird. The R390, the LM race car, and the road car. Of course, the, uh, the R390 1997 didn't carry over from Gran Turismo 2 to Gran Turismo 3. Uh, which was a bit of a shame, really. I quite liked that car. There we go. Down through Subaru, Suzuki. Only one Suzuki listed. Tommy Kyra, the, the ZZS. Um, it's actually quite similar to a pre-release... Gran Turismo 2 car list I got recently. Uh, the only Tommy Kyra model listed was the ZZS. No ZZ2 or ZZ3 or anything like that. So nothing massive that's really standing out to me here but of course I'm only going through it really really quickly now. Down through Shelby, Alfa Romeo, Aston Martin Audi, only two Audis listed and one BMW. There's the Gillet Vertigo again. Who knows if I'm saying that right? <laughs> we have Lister, of course, the one and only Lister returning from Gran Turismo T. Mercedes Benz, the Capital, <laughs> the Opal Caribra touring car, not the Calibra, the Ca Caribra. Zonda, of course, making its debut officially in this game, although it was planned to appear in Gran Turismo 2, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So, oh, we've got both both Opal and Vauxhall. However, there are more Vauxhall cars listed than Opals. Cool, right, so there we go. Back into Gran Turismo 3, back out, and GT3 Create. Uh, I assume this is discussing the creation of Gran Turismo 3. Uh, a lovely Mazda RX-7 there. And a, an absolute ton of cars parked in the car park, including what I can see is a to Toyota Ram 2 Citroen Xantia. You can see a Subaru Legacy there, obviously we won't go through them all. BMW 3 Series over there, I think. Here we have another look. Oh, an old Mazda RX-7, Renault Clio. Is that a Daihatsu Midget? It's a Daihatsu Midget. It's the, I didn't even know there was a van version of the Daihatsu Midget. I just thought that it was the uh, the, the weird sort of pickup truck thing that, that existed on the game. <laughs> that's brilliant. I'm so glad. I'm so happy that that's there. Okay, so we finished the car park, or cars park, as it says there. And we're going to go into the paddock, where we have a few more screenshots to look at. The first one shows a Clio Cup version as well as a few other cars that I can't quite make out. Now the Winfield uh, Mitsubishi Lancer, really nice car to include. That um, I believe it's actually owned by Kazunori and it was set to feature in Gran Turismo 2 and it was cut for uh, what I can presume is licensing reasons really. Um, the Winfield logo, of course, because it's a tobacco brand, was actually obscured, and you still can actually see the uh, the car on the final game of uh, Gran Turismo 2 as well. It's hidden in the game's file, so it wasn't deleted entirely. And it also shows up on the PAL language selection screen too. 
Cool, couple more shots there of the team. Master MX-5 with a lovely Gran Turismo number plate. And Honda S2000, of course, returning from Gran Turismo 2. So, last one now, on the track. As I, you know, we both know what this is going to be, it's cars on the track. And the Master RX-7 is back with what I think is an Alfa Romeo 156, could be a 155, I'm not sure. I don't suppose we're going to see the Diane C Midget here, unfortunately. But we have the Mitsubishi Lancer again with Kaz at the wheel. I really like this shot actually because you can see the uh, the videographer, the cameraman there, who is on board the Honda S2000. Now of course another shot with Kaz at the windscreen. I think what he he seems to have uh, some kind of sat nav there. Of course it's not switched on. Uh, I don't know how much use it would be going around the track. So anyway, we shall jump out. That's Gran Turismo and go into Kazunori. Now, there's a whole load of interview stuff with Kaz. So it's going to be one of those sections where you guys can just read through in your own time. Okay, so hopefully you guys have had time to digest all that. So I'm going to jump out and carry on. So the first thing to look at now is a few photos of Kazunori as well. I assume you all know what he looks like. If you don't, well, this is him. Nice shot with the PS2 and the Lancer in the background. Of course, Kazunori using the wheel as well. I'm going to jump out and go into the Le Mans folder. First folder is the PS2 car, so obviously this whole press kit is kind of centred around Grand Turismo 3 and Le Mans, and a few cars at Le Mans in that year were sponsored by PlayStation it seems. So here we go, uh, obviously that's not at Le Mans, but another car featuring the PlayStation logo of course. Fantastic. Right we'll jump out, jump into various, so these I guess is some more shot, are some more shots from, from Le Mans. Again we have the PlayStation logo on the helmet, PlayStation cap, very nice. Some guys working on the engine, a Reco Motorsport logo, and again another shot of the car with the PlayStation 2 logo on it. 
And for a bit more of, uh, of information about all those cars and you know why the PlayStation logos were adorned on them. So as you can see, PlayStation were partners to the Oreca stable, or Oreca team, as, as I would probably call it. Then obviously partner to the FFSA French team. And PlayStation creates the PlayStation Racing Team as well. One thing I actually picked up on is, um, interestingly, there's a few ex-Formula 1 names here. Ex-Formula 1 drivers often end up in Le Mans. So Yannick Dalma, Silvio Goretta, Stefan Sarazan, Frank Montagny had only a handful of races, I think. So obviously none of these were, you know, front runners in Formula 1, but quite interesting. Jonathan Cochet, I assume. Jean Philippe Dayro. <laughs> A David Terrian. Uh, who knows? Who knows if I'm pronouncing any of those names correctly? More info about the PlayStation Racing Team, of course. And again, you know, stop the video, pause it, give it a read through. And we've got some PR contact information down the bottom there, which I won't display. But just to make sure. Oh, there we go. That's all we were missing. I wondered whether there was going to be anything down the bottom there. Uh, there wasn't. Cool. So, there we go. That's pretty much all the files on the press information disk. Obviously, we have the video demo disk as well. Um, but I'm just going to bring up the GT3 press kit. Um, and we're going to have a look at the differences in the files between them both. So, jumping back into the press information disk going to jump into Gran Turismo. As you can see, all these are the same. Completely no difference here. But what's interesting is that when you get down to Gran Turismo 3, you actually have a video file. So just to bear in mind, this is the standard press materials uh, kit. And this one over here on the left is the Le Mans kit. So the one kit is actually missing this video file, presumably because it has its own video disc completely uh, and entirely devoted to video content. So we're going to check this video out, but do prepare yourself. This is possibly the most pixelated video I have ever seen. Okay, so now you've seen the video, uh, I warned you that it was going to be very pixelated, uh, and of course it was, but 
I don't know why they, they compressed it so much. Obviously, we're going back many, many years here, back to 2001. Uh, online video just, well, I know it's not online, but, you know, computerized video uh, just, just wasn't in as good quality as it is now. You know, we're very, very lucky now with what we have. So, anyway, we're going to jump back out. And we are going to go into the Le Mans folder. So, obviously, with the Le Mans specific press kit, it's bound to have like more Le Mans content, isn't it, really? Because it's all around that. But surprisingly, it's actually not too much different. So, again, starting with the, the standard press materials kit on the right, we have a folder around Kazunori, but there's nothing in there. So I can only assume that's a mistake. So other than that, we have the PS2 car folder um, with the three shots we've already um, we've already looked at. So the standard press kit is actually missing the press release all around PlayStation at Le Mans, and it's also missing the uh, the various folder too. So those are a couple of the advantages that you get with owning the the Le Mans press kit. Um, but of course, the main one is the DVD video, which we're going to check out now.
Okay guys, well that brings us to the end of the video. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed digging through these press discs with me. Uh, to be honest, I've owned them for a while now, so this video is long, long overdue. And as I say, it's one that was requested quite often by several different people as well, so I'm really, really happy that we finally got around to it. Not a bad way to kick off a new decade. Thanks as always for your support, and especially thank you to my channel members, you really make stuff like this possible. I'll see you next time.